Welcome back to Escape Man and Watch. Falling Titan here. In this video, we're looking at the Hamilton PSR, a recreation of the Pulsar, the world's first digital watch. So it is an icon and historic. And it's the it's most hideous thing I've ever seen in my life. The most hideous thing? I've shown you the Omega Seamaster Professional 300. Uh, you only don't like that watch. Oh, right, right. Only I don't like it. Um, Chai Ken's uh, Joker watch. Uh, that's hideous too. It is hideous. Oh, oh, I know something that will top it all. This thing. Oh, yeah. You win. The Hodinkee Travel Clock. Tops them all. Let's check it out. Okay, let's start off by thanking Kavar Jewelers for lending this into the channel. And if you want to buy this watch, email me in the description below and I'll give you a discount code and this exact one can be yours. Now let's get into it. Introducing the Hamilton PSR, a recreation of the world's first digital watch. They used to call this a time screen. Now, how cool is that? The ancient, well, not ancient, <laughs> the old timey lingo. You got to remember that this was a crazy leap forward for them. They never used to have screens like this, especially on the timepiece. And it was a big deal. Of course, Seiko invented the first quartz watch, but that was analog with an hour hand and minute hand. This is the first digital one. All right, look at that. So Seiko actually bought out the name Pulsar from Hamilton years after. So Hamilton could not call this one the Pulsar. So they had to call it the PSR, something that sounds like Pulsar, but is not Pulsar or Seiko would sue them. Now the original, I think looked a little bit better than this one, the P1. It was more square, more boxy. Kind of reminds me of uh, my Casio. A little bit more square and the button was at the bottom. This is a homage or a recreation of the P2. The P2 is the second generation. They both came out in 1972, shown in 1970. Uh, anyways, the button moved to the side and it looks kind of like this old TV, vintage TV, classic style, or maybe space helmet. Remember those 70s TV shows where they had robots? Yeah, it kind of looks like that. So the original had one year battery, roughly, if you clicked it 25 times a day. So you got to click and hold a bit and you get the display to show. But people were probably so excited, probably clicking it three to 400 times a day. <laughs> they were saying uh, they were getting about a month or three months. So people were, I guess, very proud. Now the price was 1500 USD. Uh, for the P2 or the P1, sorry. And that in today's money is about 9,500 USD. So uh, with inflation, it was an expensive watch. It was for the elite. Elton John wore one, James Bond in Live and Let Die. So a lot of famous people because it was the future. It is like getting the most high tech, the latest and greatest so kind of like, I guess, people who love electronics now, iPhones, they want the latest and greatest. Kind of the same thing. Not really, because this was more groundbreaking. But you get my drift. The watch was a breakthrough. It was a game changer. It created history. So when you're buying one of these, you're getting nostalgia, of course, and 100% a conversation piece. This thing will start conversations. It looks cool. It's not really my style, but it is definitely a conversation starter and of course a piece of history. So 100%, I'm a fan of this watch. Now let's do the dimensions. So we have 40.8 in diameter, 13.5 thick. If you include that sapphire crystal that just sticks out like that, I kind of wish they made it flush. It just looks a little weird. Uh, but 
the original had it sticking out, so the P2. And the lug to lug, 34.7. So very short lug to lug. Now these lugs here are part of the case. It's not real. And then it just connects, the bracelet just connects here with a screw, but the rest of the bracelet is pins and collars. A long uh, collar in the middle, and it's a butterfly with signed Hamilton. Some people don't like butterfly because they're hard to put on. You got to do one and the other instead of just a quick chick, 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 one second. I don't know how I feel about it. Never owned a butterfly clasp. So. And there's the case back. It has a planet with the, I guess, power lines or <laughs> sunray lines. Some kind of a lines, orbital lines coming through them or out of them. Very cool. So that's the bracelet. All solid, solid, milled, everything. So it's a high quality bracelet. This is a Hamilton, remember. So you're getting a high quality piece of kit, no matter what. Now it has LCD screen and OLED screen. So when you push it, the OLED kicks in. But the LCD is a reflective hybrid screen. So even when it's not on, you can see the time right there. So that's a cool feature. The old one to save battery only when you push the button. This one all the time and it's a five year battery. So a lot more powerful technology has definitely improved in the last 50 years. So one year to five years. Very good. And 100 meters water resistant. Okay, guys, I had to move the lights around to get a better angle. I think I found it to show you guys the time without the reflection kicking in. So now we can do the functions. You push it and of course you get the OLED and you get the powerful light. You can see it in all angles. Now, the one that's always on, we need to click and hold to go to time setting. 9 p.m., let's go to 11 and we hold and we move on to the next, the minutes. All right. Let's go one more. Click again, you go to the next minutes. There we go. And now you can time the seconds. So you can get it to atomic time, set it to the exact seconds, and then always click and hold. And then you're done. So 11, 11. But this is what people were so excited about. The fact that you could push a button and see the time for the first time ever. You don't have to uh, read the analog hours and hands. And Pulsar was describing the fact that gears, levers, oils, maintenance, winding no longer existed, no moving parts, so reliable. They said it could go up to 50 years, besides battery, of course. And the LCD up to 100, they claimed. And some people with the original one are saying, you know, it's 50 years old right now and it's doing well. So maybe, maybe they were right. Let's check it out on my wrist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Six and a half inch wrist. There we go. Uh, it looks like we're in the future now, guys. Ultra comfortable. The bracelet is perfect. It just sits really flat. And yeah, definitely a cool looking futuristic watch. <laughs> All right. Now, let's compare it just for fun with my work watch. I wear this at work. <laughs> Look at that. Let me, let me click it. There we go. The original first ever digital time screen and a modern time screen. This used to cost the price <laughs> of many, many Rolexes back in the day. <laughs> and this costs uh, a fraction of one Rolex today. <laughs> Look how technology changes. This is so cool. Amazing. Now, uh, let's do the weight. No links removed, 139 grams. Very light. When you take some out, 
even lighter. It's gonna wear perfect all day. No time grapher, it's quartz. The old one did about uh, 60 seconds a year. Expect better. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.